Hello boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet, and midway through saying that intro I realised I probably should have turned the lights on before I started recording. Yeah. Welcome to another deck adent opening, if you will. The decadent series is what I'm planning to use as my I'm gonna open some shit and see if you like it. As you notice, I said the word shit, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I bought these of my own volition. These, ladies and gentlemen, if the camera will focus, are collector boosters. These, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone betwixt friends and family, these are expensive. These, so one of these, one of these came with my, it came free with my booster box, as most people are telling you. Uh, my booster box cost like 110 or 115 pounds, uh, which is way more than any of the booster box I've ever bought from a store before, the one that I bought from my store. It came with, it came with an eclectic booster and it supports the store, so I'm not really mad or upset about that, but saying it's free is kind of a, kind of a misnomer because they're evidently not getting those packs for free with the booster box to sell out. Or if they are, then the stores are making a markup. These... We're meant to be 20 each, but when I got to my store, I'm not going to name and shame, but there were 25 when I got there. They're meant to be 20 when I spoke to someone like twice over the course of the last week, because I plan to pick some up today to do this, to crack these, so you can vicariously live through me, and also be the judge of whether or not you think these are worth it. Now, I've opened a box of Eldrain, and I was okay and happy with what I got out of it. I've opened uh, five out of my 10 packs within my fat pack, or as they call it, a bundle now. Both those videos are available in the description and the, and then the cards of this video, so you can go watch those if you want to see more pack openings from Handsome Old British Me. The bundle I thought was pretty good. The oversized dice, the box, 10 boosters for around £30 is pretty good. That's only £5 more than one of these boosters. For the price of these two boosters, which is £50, I can basically buy a brand new video game here in the UK. Some of them are 60 at times because, you know, inflation and well, capitalism and greed. But on the whole, £50 will get you a new video game, especially if you shop around a little. So these are expensive, right? So there's the EV there. For those who don't know, EV is like estimated or expected value, I guess is the correct term. It's the idea of how much you pay in, can you expect to try and get the value out of that? If the EV is good, you have a higher chance of getting your money back or more. If the EV is bad, then you're just basically shitting money into the wind. Now, the important thing to understand about that whole idea of getting your money back, well, sometimes you don't have to get your money back. Sometimes you just enjoy all the thrill of having that scratch, that scratch card option. That scratch card chance of getting an expensive card. But then you're gambling. And um, yeah, magic isn't gambling, kids. Don't don't tell European authorities that, because then we might have problems around boosters and stuff. You don't always have to make your money back on your packs either. Sometimes you can just crack packs for the fun of it, the old nostalgia. Sometimes you draft with them, for example. So bear in mind, EV isn't always necessarily about the cost of the things you get back, because a draft how do you how do you value three hours or four hours of fun on a Friday night or a Thursday night with your friends? But when you're just cracking these like I'm about to, there's no chance of that. I mean, I'm getting some value out of this because people are going to watch this video, hopefully, and people will comment on it and I'll engage my community. And I'm also providing a service in some ways of showing you so you can live vicariously. That's the tag word of this whole series, vicariously through me. But yeah, it's kind of a bad feel, right? And the thing is, I've cracked, like I, I opened a $50 booster pack in an ASMR video before, which I'll link in the comments to this as well. But that was like because the pack was old and hard to get hold of and there wasn't that many in the wild anymore and they had old cards in them. These are freshly off the printing press. One last thing before I get into it. I've noticed people say that, you know, gambling on these is no different to gambling on normal boosters. You shouldn't really crack them for singles, but some people will because they enjoy it and uh, not to, you know, shit on what people like. Whilst I get that idea, I mean, the idea of buying three boosters at like £4 or whatever they are, 12 quid, that's the cost of what, a takeaway meal to crack packs? I mean, that's a little bit less feel bad than... I mean, that's a little bit less feel bad than £75. I mean, you've got higher chance of hoping higher value in these, as I'll come to in a moment, but that still doesn't make it not a bad taste, right? And truly, lastly, moving on from that point, <sighs> these things are kind of predatory practices, right? The people that are going to buy these up, hopefully are people... Hopefully, hopefully are people who have expendable income. People who can sink the cost, like I am doing, into my YouTube channel and business. But there are others that will... Buy one of these when they probably shouldn't. A, a young kid who's only got a certain amount of magic to spend on his hobbies, certain amount of magic, so much money to spend on their hobbies, they buy one of these and feel bad. Or there's the gamblers out there, the people who've got psychological, I don't know, not weaknesses, but you know, they're, 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 they have issues with avoiding the gambling. This is a thing that happens, there are people out there like this, and if you put a, a higher prize there, even with a higher cost, they may well still go and snap those up and... Uh, get fucking shafted. So I'm not sure on these. Let's crack them and see how I feel after I've burnt £75. 
So big shout out to a viewer who gave me this lovely Soul Ring playmat while I was in Vegas. That I played some Commander on. It's from the Grand Prix Las Vegas Commander Championships of 2018. I didn't catch your name, but we exchanged some words and you gifted this to me very kindly. So I just want to say thank you. If you're watching this and you gave this to me at Vegas, thank you ever so much because it's, it's fucking sweet. Right. Three collector's booster. Let's crack on with this. This is what you've come to see. People are going to be commenting in the comment section below being like, Vince, you spoke about like how you felt about them and shit. And we just wanted to see the goods. So everything in here should be foil, right? So we've got a foil Tomb Raider. Quite nice. We have a foil Crystal Slipper. Sorry, I was just getting the focus right there. We have a foil... Focus my hand. Garen Bridge Paladin. Prized Griffin. Lash of Thorns. <laughs> Look at all these foil comments. Okay. We've got our first foil alternate border Queen of Ice. Okay, this card's pretty good. That foiling is real nice, to be fair. So that's pretty swish. That's pretty swish. That's a common. We've got a non... We've got a Beanstalk... Sorry, a, a foil, but a non-alternative frame. A non-story frame Beanstalk Giant. Which is actually being played in stands a little bit at the moment. Arcanist Owl. Again, a very nice foil. It's an uncommon, though. I don't know if it's going to see that much play anywhere. Sorcerer's Broom. So far, so kind of weak. The only exciting thing being this, this, this Ice Queen. Smitten Swordmaster, well wow, that's playable and standard, and it's the f it's a non-foil version of the alternate frame. That's kind of upsetting. We've got a non-foil version of a Curious Pair in the alternative frame. We've got a non-foil version of Rimrock Knight in the alternative frame. We've got Ember Earth Skyblazer. This this isn't foil, nor is it an alternate frame. I think this is from the, the Brawl deck, right? As long as it's your turn, it has flying. Whenever attacks, you may pay three, and if you do, could you control get plus X plus zero in terms of turn what X number of opponents you have? Yeah, this is from the ball deck. All the X number of opponents you control thing is is brawl. This is a brawl card, a brawl rare, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, so we'll put that over there. And then we've got Clackridge Troll in the, the full border, but not foil. It looks very good in the full border, to be completely fair to it. But again, it's not foil, so I feel a little bit underwhelmed. There's a bit of a whiff in terms of what rare it is. Let's put that for there for the other borders. Then we've got Foil Castle of Arden Vale. Now that is very nice. Um, it's a very playable card. It might be the worst potentially of the castles. Only time will tell. And then we've got a Foil... Um, oh, let's put that in with the rares there actually. A Foil Rat Token. Cool Rat Token. All the tokens in these packs as far as I understand that have food. I do love the art with the bananas. A Foil Food Token. So that's something. That's unique. That you don't get in other packs, right? Sure. So far, so not very good. So first pack, I'm not going to lie. I feel a bit... Like, if that was £25 that I paid for that, I'd be pretty pretty upset. So we've got Foil Idyllic Grange. Foil Silver Flame Ritual. Foil Thrill of Possibility. Foil Merfolk Skullkeeper. Foil Scaldron, Scalding Cauldron. A Foil Back to Nature. or oh, Return to Nature, sorry, which I already had in my booster box. If you want to go see it? Oh, that's nice. Look, the thing I need to say again here, I want to reiterate, the frames and the art direction and the foiling, the people who get to choose how things get foiled, because there is actually a person who has to like, choose where the highlights go and stuff, they have smashed it in this set. This set is gorgeous. It's just the, the actual products themselves that I'm a bit confused by and probably upset about. But, although not that playable a card, it's a, it's a pretty nice foil. It's a pretty nice foil. So I'm going to put that there. Trail of Crumbs, a foil on common. Spectre Shriek of Foil, uh, uncommon. Then I've got, <laughs> I've got the non-foil version of Toon Veil Tree Folk, which is kind of like a kick in the teeth. Same with Arden Veil Tactician, unfoil. Merchant of Veil, I mean, I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? This card is going to be playable somewhere, probably even in modern. And these frames are going to be wanted, but does anyone want this frame without the foiling? I guess people don't want to foil their decks, right? So this is the first desirable alt frame I think we've got. A Windscarred Crag? Are you actually fucking kidding me? This is one of the Brawl cards. But if you don't know, Windscarred Crag is the life game land that has been in multiple sets before. It's not a chase card in the slide. I've just got a common life game land in my £25 booster. Are you fucking for real? What the fuck is that? Okay, moving on. That's kind of a joke. That almost feels like a parody. Almost feels like a parody. And uh, that is not foil. We've got an extended art. Wildborn Preserver, not foil. Okay, that's cool. I'll take one of those. 
I've now with my second fall because I traded one off John. I don't even know if I'll end up playing anywhere, but the falling is so nice. The art itself, the card is very cool. Okay, so I got something I I like, but again, I wouldn't have spent twenty five pounds to get this. I think it's like four euros for foil of this at the moment on Mark MKM. So yeah, in in England we're not chasing these for twenty five pounds, that's for sure. Then we've got the adorable ball token, which is again the food on the back. Okay, so far, so very disappointing. Like I said, the the the. the the variance might be to the same like multiplier as it is in a normal pack for like, the value you can get because I think like the full art foil hinge for example is like 150, 200 bucks or something ridiculous. Uh, I guess full art foil uh, or extended art foil okos might be very expensive too. But yeah, the, the the disparity is is it feels bigger because you're paying such a huge entry cost. Uh, Signpost scarecrow. Uh, oh, hang on, I'll put this in the brawl pack over here. This one thing. Signpost scarecrow, wicked guardian. All these in foil. Witch's Cottage. Curious Pair. Merfolk Secret Keeper in foil. That is very nice again. God, these cards in foil are so good. I wish I just bit the bullet and made them all in foil, right? Like, uh, never mind. Okay, foil there. Foil Barge in, sure. A foil Ice Queen not in the, the new frame, which I guess, yeah, it's quite, it's a nice foil, I, I, I guess. Shepherd of the Flock, yeah, sure. Not, not, <laughs> it's just impossible to get excited for some of these things, right? Epic Downfall. We've got another non foil version of True and Vain Tree Folk, another non foil Rimrock Knight, another non foil one. So, I think in these showcase slots, by the way, you can get like all different rarities in the, in the slot that gives you this frame. But I got a Silver Flame Squire, I got a Fairy Formation, which is a five mana, five four flying fairy that creates a one one blue fairy creature token with flying. Draw a card for four mana. Probably fair enough. Commander card from the Brawl Precons. Let's put that over in the Brawl Precons there. This is the most... Co so I've opened... I've watched a couple of people open these packs trying to get an idea of what's in them. This is the third time I've seen this fucking non-foil extended border escape to the wilds get opened. Ooh, okay. That might be some... This is the thing, right? Like, let's put this in the... This is a foil extended border black lace paragon. It's going to be a standard staple. Crokey's the the Scottish streamer says this is the most broken card in the set. I think he's a bit mad. I mean, he thinks this is the best removal spell in the set, but like, let's be real. That's that's Murderous Rider, right? But this is going to be a standard card and then nothing else. So this is going to be not worth a whole much, a whole bunch, which means that it's just not going to make that pack worth it. There you go, kids. I just opened basically seventy five pounds, which is what you can get a box for a few weeks after release, right? Um, yeah, I think the most valuable thing I opened is probably this. I'm kind of a bit stumped on what to say. That was just a huge anticlimax. I guess that's the thing with opening boosters, right? Imagine if this was three normal boosters, I've got three normal rares, nothing exciting. But if I opened a foil at Oko, or the foil fetch that I got in my box, I got excited. So if I opened this and this was like the Great Henge, or an Oko... Or any of the other like mythics or like desirable rares, then yeah, I guess I would have got pretty hyped. I'm kind of glad that didn't happen because although ugh, I basically shot away this money as a as a cost for the business and stuff, it I didn't want this video to show these packs being absolutely godly and then people rushing out to buy them because they don't. I don't want to give a false impression. This is the bad beats that you can get. Yeah, so I guess. I guess with the Alara boosters, we said we had all foil Alara boosters back during Alara block, and they weren't desirable. No one wanted them. They didn't sell very well, and they were, for lack of a better word, they were shit. Right? I guess they're still shit, even when the art design and the the graphic design and the iconography of the set and the realization of the world, even when they're all really on point. I guess Alara was too, right? But we, they didn't have the special stuff like this. The all foil premium boosters still feel a bit shit. I'm not. I'm not down on the idea of these existing. I just felt there needs to be more value in them. At the moment, they just feel like an unethical practice that isn't going to even almost ever deliver on its promise of being a pack for collectors. If a collector opened this, what they excited about this? Because this is generally a rare thing that you can't get elsewhere. Because the rest of these things are available in other packs, right? You can't get foil extended arts in, in the normal packs. Let me know in the comment section below how disappointed you were or whether you think I'm being a baby. Like, tell me if you think I'm being unnecessarily down on this. Like, look. I just want to be focused on this again. I opened a common fucking brawl card. That is a land that has been in millions of other sets. It's a fucking... Oh, that's, that's so lame. 
Another claim that I've seen is that um, th the card stock on these packs isn't good, okay? I just want to prove that actually it's not distinguishable. Oh shit, maybe it is distinguishable. Can you tell which side is the... Uh... Yeah, this strip of white here is on the collector booster cards. Why is that? That's a normal booster pack, a load of rares. Why is that? What's in the middle there? Hmm. It's just my eyes, it's just the camera? No, there's definitely a different colour there, isn't there? Cut that apart. What am I cutting at? So I'm not cutting anything in tickets, so it's not a certain frame. I thought it might be these frames, for example. No, oh, shuffling without sleeves and these premium booster product. Yeah, there's some definitely some discoloration on these cards, but I don't know if there's any more than normal. See how some are more white and some are more blue? Here are the rares from my booster box. Again. The camera accentuates it, but I don't think it's any different, right? No, oh, these are... Oh, these are the foil. Oh, these aren't even my rares. One second. No, I don't think there's much difference. This, this character doesn't. The, the tokens do. The tokens definitely look different on the edges. That's why you're seeing this white strip at the front here. Once you like stick cards together, I don't think there's that much of a difference. Well, there is a, there is a subtle difference. This is all Eldrain booster box. These are the collector boosters I just opened. Hmm. I guess there is a noticeable difference, but outside of sleeves, it won't be noticeable. But it does show the card has been printed on a different stock, right? Interesting. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this frivolous, decadent unboxing where I get to crack packs that maybe should be drafted with, or I guess in these cases, are these fucking things not even designed to be drafted with. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like the video, share it with your friends, open up the conversation around this because sharing content is the best way you can support a creator. I have been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'll see you all very, very soon. Until next time, be good to one another, and ta-ta for now.